For the longest time, if you asked me what my favorite movie was, I would answer Fight Club. I saw it when I was fairly young, in my early teens. Admittedly, at that age, a part of Fight Club's appeal was its overall edginess. Even then, and still now, I feel a strong connection with the narrator. I've struggled with insomnia, I've felt crushed by modern consumerism, and at times, I've felt completely alone through it all. So when the audience is introduced to Tyler Durden, I immediately saw him as a hero. Much like the narrator, Tyler was everything that I, in my young age, was not. He had a larger-than-life aura about him, practically oozing with self-confidence and charisma, even if something seemed off about him. However, that was part of the appeal as well. He acted how he wanted and said things without care of the consequences. As an insecure teenager, unsure of his place in the world, I saw traits like this as an ideal, something to aspire to. Even more so, as the story moves forward, we see Tyler's conviction in his beliefs. He shows that he's not afraid to take a punch for his cause, that he's willing to go above and beyond for his goals, all the while encouraging and shaping those around him to do the same. In this day and age where what it means to be a man seems to be up for debate, Tyler stands as a pillar, unwavering to winds and storms alike. However, as I've grown, both in age and understanding, I now see Tyler as a dangerous villain. I realize that it's jarring for me to say that after praising him, but in reality, I think that's what makes him so threatening. In a lot of ways, Tyler is right. Of course, that kind of writing makes any villain that much scarier and more realistic. When an antagonist makes you stop and question your line of thinking or your morality, that's when they really get into your head. Some loon on the side of the road spouting nonsense is easily ignored, but if some of what he says makes sense, it becomes much harder to decipher the right from wrong. Lies are much easier to swallow when mixed together with truth, like a spoonful of sugar helping the medicine go down. Just like the sugar, truth can be mixed in or even manipulated in order to serve a different purpose. Even in the Bible, we see Satan himself, while trying to tempt Jesus, using scripture as a way to get his point across. Heck, we see it every day in social media, taking clips or quotes out of context in order to frame someone or something in a specific light. Tyler is clever. He doesn't just start off his newfound relationship with the narrator by saying, hey, society sucks, wanna blow up some credit card buildings with me? No, he takes a much more subtle and insidious approach to try to shape the narrator how he sees fit. Directly after he's introduced into the story, the narrator's luggage is taken from him due to an unspecified vibration, thought to be a bomb, and his apartment is blown to pieces. The narrator calls up his new buddy Tyler, who he met on their flight, they meet at a bar to have a few beers together, and under the guise of casual conversation, Tyler starts to plant the seeds of his ideology about society and consumerism. Directly after this, he offers him a place to stay, but with one stipulation. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. After several viewings, it's clear that this is all calculated and planned. Tyler blew up the narrator's apartment, and since they share the same luggage, put something in it for it to be confiscated. He knew that the narrator has no one to call, no place to stay, no close friends to fall back on, and forcibly puts the narrator in a precarious situation. Then, he nudges him to do things outside of his comfort zone, breaking down his boundaries over time in obscure ways. If you pay close attention, you'll see Tyler do things like this throughout the whole movie. Their first interaction is a discussion about sitting next to the emergency exit on their flight. The narrator remarks that it's a lot of responsibility, and when Tyler asks if he'd like to switch seats, the narrator refuses. He doesn't want the responsibility. Time and time again, Tyler asks for permission to take the wheel, and the narrator gives him the driver's seat. This manipulation isn't only found in their unique relationship either. We clearly see Tyler use the same tactics on the people that join Fight Club. Men who are feeling emasculated by society, lost in their ways, only to find some kind of purpose in the carnal act of fighting each other. A lot like with the narrator, Tyler pushes their boundaries, with the final rule of Fight Club being that, if it's your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. We see him giving dogmatic speeches, we see himself act as some kind of martyr for their cause, and he hands out homework to further push the boundaries of what they are okay doing. This all culminates with these men giving up their individuality in order to become a part of Tyler's cult. Tyler criticizes society for using the strongest and smartest men who've ever lived, as he calls them, by saying that they're an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves, and white collars, only to turn around and have these men doing labor for him. We even see this portrayed in their white waiter outfits paralleled by their Project Mayhem attire, ultimately the same status, just a different uniform. Tyler transforms these men who are feeling lost and dejected by society into men who are complicit and active in hiding a dead body from the police. Just as the narrator himself, all of these men, little by little, are just letting themselves become Tyler Durden. Manipulation isn't the only fault found in Tyler. 
He is painted as a man who treats people as objects to be used, like how he's only in the same room with Marla if they're having sex. We see this reflected in the way that Marla speaks about the bridesmaid's dress she wears in this scene. She says that someone loved it intensely for one day, then tossed it. That's exactly how Tyler uses then discards her without any regard. He uses violence and destructive vandalism as a way to further push his agenda and dogma. These acts are painted as slights against the system without any thought to the regular day-to-day -day workers who inevitably have to clean up the mess. Worst of all, he exposes children to pornography. Not only is this the most shocking and vile thing that he does, but it serves no purpose beyond causing trauma and harm to the innocent. Doing this doesn't help his cause, but it does reveal his view on people caught in the crossfire. He simply doesn't care. Tyler acts as if he's some great liberator to people who are in a proverbial jail, but then just spends his time pissing on the inmates trapped behind the bars. Towards the end of the film, the narrator realizes that he and Tyler are the same person. Now that the narrator fully understands Tyler's destructive and dangerous plans of bombing specific credit card buildings, he tries to stop him. This leads to a struggle for control over their shared body. I used to think that the crux of the film was in the shocking revelation that they are the same person, but now I believe that the sequence of their fighting bears much more profound weight. The narrator is no match for Tyler at this point, harking to the allegory of the two wolves inside every man, the one to win is the one who has been fed. Up until this point, the narrator has given up control too often and has allowed Tyler to grow stronger and stronger. While he does lose this physical altercation, in the end he comes to the realization that he holds the gun and decides to kill Tyler in a psychological sense, shooting himself. What he says before he pulls the trigger is the most important part of this film. He says, Tyler, I want you to really listen to me. My eyes are open. Of course, when I first saw this, the meaning of it went right over my head. Now I recognize that its connotation is twofold. First, upon hearing that they are the same person, the narrator is still in a state of denial. He continues to treat Tyler as a separate person, arguing with him and even trying to shoot him directly. It's not until he holds the gun himself and points it at his own head that his actualization is finalized. In this moment, he's taking back the responsibility that he has flippantly given away throughout the film. The narrator was the one sitting by the emergency exit, he was the one driving the car, and he's the one holding the gun. Taking responsibility means that his hands are ultimately stained with Tyler's actions, but it also gives him the power to change his course. Second, along with the revelation of autonomy, he fully understands Tyler's philosophy and ideology. While some of his opinions may hold fragments of truth, ultimately the ends do not justify the means. The narrator decides that the best way forward, the only way, is to kill Tyler and take back full control over his own life. This is a full refusal of Tyler and his principles. No rejection is as definitive as a bullet to the head. Even now as I write this script, I feel a connection to the narrator and his choice to destroy Tyler. The more I think about and analyze Fight Club, the more I'm disgusted by Tyler and his actions. When I saw this as a young teen, I genuinely thought of him as a hero. I'm almost ashamed of myself for ever thinking that, but I also never really gave myself time to truly look him over. It's easy to see his strength and confidence, hear his sermons over metaphorical consumeristic shackles, and admire his conviction and determination. However, Tyler Durden is not someone to emulate or praise. He is a cautionary tale to those who feel lost or trapped and are desperate for guidance and purpose. He is a wolf in shepherd's clothing, reaching out to the sheep only to guide them to their own destruction. If you enjoy taking a deeper look into a character like I did with Tyler, then make sure to check out my video over why Saitama for One Punch Man can't be beat, or feel free to check out this playlist with my other character analysis videos. I really hope you enjoy the video. Have a great day and peace out.